So I have a list here of 10 ways that being in toxic relationships and being around narcissists will create a problem where you start blocking your own healing. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from toxic narcissistic relationships in your life. Let's just jump in. Number one, your inner dialogue. We have negative self-talk a lot. The inner dialogue that happens after you've been repeatedly and systematically and sometimes for a lifetime around toxic manipulation from narcissistic people is that it creates a confused it creates a confusing cognitive dissonance about the way you might think about everything in life, the way you might see the world as you relate to it, all right? And your inner dialogue is one that takes blame, one that feels shame, one that feels all of the toxicity as if it's your fault, as if you had some part of it, even though logically you know you didn't, all right? So that cognitive dissonance that thinking that that creates that blame and shame and all of that that comes from the way a narcissistic person lays the blame on you, puts shame on you for the very things that they're doing will affect your ability to heal because you have to get past that in order to feel and see and recognize the truth of who you really are, which is nothing like the version of who you are that the narcissistic person created for their delusion to make sense to them, right? In order for you to follow the delusional pattern that they set up in the relationship. So number two, overthinking. Why do we overthink? Well, because we're always having to question everything. We're always having to look for the moment when that person's going to turn. We're always walking on eggshells. We're always questioning and second guessing and wondering if we're the problem and wondering if we've done something wrong and wondering how to fix things and wondering how to help things. Of course, you're overthinking. Your brain is used to thinking a lot. It doesn't just stop thinking a lot when you get away from toxic people. No, the patterns and the way your brain thinks are kind of set. So in order to relax overthinking, there are techniques, there is healing, there is ways to work with it that can help you slow your thinking, can help you to experience being in the moment, experience allowing your thoughts to slow down, and you will start seeing you think more clearly when this starts happening. But you can see how that will totally affect you from the way narcissistic people are in relationships. So you're blocking your healing, number three, when you're continually looking and wondering and thinking about what your toxic ex is doing or what your toxic parents are doing or what your toxic coworkers or boss or whatever is doing. When you are constantly referring in the daytime, in the nighttime, back to that toxic person, wondering what they're doing, what they're on about, who they're with, you're blocking your own healing because your life is about you, my friends. Your life is not about them, okay? And when we start having a self-focused life, even if it's a life of giving to others, even if it's a life where it is selfless in a lot of ways, we still have to have a self-focus. We have to have our own drive and our own motivation. If we throw our motivation back towards toxic people, we're blocking our ability to heal and feel joy and be happy. Number four, basic lack of self-care. If you don't know what self-care is, it's time to start figuring it out because it is really you who has to do the work to give yourself what you need so that you do not tolerate or stay in toxic relationships. So number five, if you are focusing and managing others far too much, if you're putting all your attention on trying to manage those around you, whether it be your children, your friends, your partner, your parents, whatever, if you are feeling like maybe you're a little bit controlling of the way other people are and you're managing situations, or if you have way too many people relying on you because you're the only one who can get stuff done, because this is real, people will rely on you and let you do it if you let them, right? If you find yourself doing that over and over and over, you're not allowing for your own space. You're not allowing for yourself to be present. You're not allowing for the values other than you as a caregiver and you as a fixer to be there in your life. And it's super hard on you. That is draining. That will create what they call compassion fatigue or empathy fatigue. It'll create all these problems for you that doesn't allow for you to be a whole and healthy human being. Number six, if you are avoiding your emotions, you can't heal them. It requires going through it, feeling it, being in the feelings to move past the emotional traumas that we've had 
personally, I have been training in and working with personally a lot of internal family systems work. And I find that to be really useful for that. That's for another video later on, okay? Number seven, judging your emotions or being impatient with them. You guys, when we're judging yourself, you are blocking your healing, okay? When you're judging yourself in any way, it is okay to take accountability. In fact, it's needed, right, for each human being. But to judge your actions, to place shame and blame on yourself, it means that you can't learn. It means that you're stuck in the position of whatever that judgment says you are. And you can see how you'd gain this judgmental attitude towards yourself when you've been judged your whole life by toxic narcissists. Number eight, this is big. Fear. Fear will block your healing. Being afraid to move forward, being afraid of change, being afraid of what if. This is embedded in your mind from toxic people because they are never giving you stability. They are never giving you a sense of safety. They're never giving you a sense of any basically power of your own. And everything is, is about them and about what they control. And so you lose your sense of adventure, you lose your sense of self, and yeah, you become fearful. And you also get to this place where the known situation, the known bad really, is better than the unknown. But really, is it? Number nine, it's really hard to accept and allow what is, all right? The allowance of what is, if you can get there, will open up your world to healing. But you can see that the narcissist has gaslit you so much to believe the truth is not the truth, and the lie is the truth, but do you believe it or don't you believe it? You know how it is when you've been gaslit for so long and when you have been projected on and when you have been devalued. So stepping back and observing, learning to be more of an observer toward the things that happened, not to say your emotions don't matter because we just talked about the fact that they do, but sometimes it's about stepping back saying, yes, emotions, I feel you, and this is the truth of what happened. I need to allow that to be truth because once you start allowing that to be truth, you're able to detach from the toxic people and to move forward towards things in your life that bring you joy and happiness. And number 10, a narcissist will drill this into your mind because they don't wanna lose your supply. They need you to feel stuck. They need you to feel reliant on them for your well-being, your happiness, your joys, even though you don't really have very many by the time you're done with these relationships, okay? They need to be in charge of you. And when someone else has been in charge of you for so long, the part of you that knows how to do it for yourself kind of atrophies. Know that this gets better as you start working through the other things. You will unstick. Get coaching if you need it, okay? Get group coaching. But really, this is great for one-on-one -on -one coaching because this feeling of being stuck, there is so much good stuff underneath that that you don't even know is there until someone starts asking you, the right questions that help you open up to yourself in a safe enough environment where you're not being judged and you're not being criticized and you're able to be yourself. And when that starts happening, healing changes and it gets a little exciting. And even though it's hard and scary, it starts happening. So please, if you need that, or if you need information on that, check out the main description of every video where there's all kinds of resources there, okay? So I will see you guys on the next video.